Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and it's time to talk some more smack. So in this video, I wanted to talk about five brands that went through a recent rebranding. And well, it, the rebranding kind of flopped for them. So these are brands that try to do a change to their image, to their products, whether that's by changing their name, getting rid of a CEO, or changing their packaging altogether for a fresher, cleaner look, or going cruelty free. And how so far the rebrand seems to have failed them. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. And we're gonna start out with probably the most infamous of all of these brands. KVD vegan beauty doing good all these things and you've probably heard people make fun of that I personally made fun of that okay because this was a part of their manifesto so Kat Von D is a celebrity tattoo artist and she started this makeup brand under the Kendo umbrella so Kendo is an umbrella brand for a lot of celebrity brands that you may be familiar with in Sephora because Kendo and Sephora are a part of a larger pairing company LVMH so it makes sense that Kendo would partner with different celebrities create brands and then sell them in Sephora exclusively so Kat Von D was one of those brands other brands include like Marc Jacobs and Fenty Beauty so Kat Von D started out this makeup line it was a success people love the edginess to the packaging and to the actual products she was producing colorful stories when not many brands were doing it so she was the it girl for quite a while and I love that brand for quite a while until of course the skeletons in her closet came tumbling all the way out now the first strike against her for me is her former friendship with Jeffree Star who listen I just can't support Jeffree Star I will never support him and people that are friends with him tend to get a strike in my book so that's the first strike against her but she had actually spoken out and publicly ended her friendship with Jeffree Star over like disagreements that they had and then she also spoke about him not paying an artist that he worked with anyway that was like the beginning of the end for her because the Jeffree Star stands oh my god they went after her and Jeffree Star dragged her through the mud and if you know anything about Jeffree Star anything he touches is muddy as hell so that was the start then she came out with her anti-vaccine remarks when she was pregnant so she declared that she wasn't gonna vaccinate her kid and all this stuff about a vegan lifestyle for the child and how she was gonna do this that on the other and people were like excuse me what the hell about this anti-vaccine child people went after Kat Von D for her anti-vaccination stance like we're talking about herd immunity look at the state we're in right now with this pandemic you think you can stand out here talking about oh I I'm anti-vax blah 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 I mean it's okay to have concerns but to spread the anti-vaccination propaganda was just mm -mm, the last straw for a lot of people and then on top of that we started learning things about anti-semitism and racism in her past and with her spouses so people were done with Kat Von D no mm -mm, we're done cut her out so Kendo said you know what we're losing sales everything mm -mm, the brand is crashing you got to go so Kat Von D stepped down as the creative director and CEO well I guess she wasn't the CEO but as the creative director of the brand so now KVD vegan beauty was born because they had to get rid of the Kat Von D name right how are they gonna do that none other than keep the same initials and slap on a vegan beauty on it because that's exactly what they did they renamed the brand KVD Vegan Beauty to represent that they are a vegan brand and a cruelty-free brand, which, okay, relax, everybody calm down. But they kept the KVD. And when people ask them, okay, so what does the KVD stand for? This is what they said. They said, the KVD in our new name, KVD Vegan Beauty, stands for our ethos and new manifesto. <laughs> They were serious about this. It does not stand for a person's initials. Like they were adamant about it. It does not stand for Kat Von D. It stands for something else. So we're like, okay, all right, fine. We believe in kindness, vegan beauty, and discovery. That is what they decided to tell us that the KVD stands for. K for kindness, V for vegan beauty, and D for discovery and doing good. <laughs> this is 
actually posted this on their social media. I cannot. This is on their Instagram right now. I cannot, okay? And then they spoke about the packaging, how they're not gonna do away with their packaging that they have already, that already has the KVD logo on it, that has the Kat Von D name on it. And we've seen that in recent launches that they're still utilizing the Kat Von D packaging from yesteryear. So even though Kat Von D is gone, the name is still on the packaging, they came out with this stupid manifesto and they have been tanking ever since. People who wanted to give them a second chance now that Kat Von D is out the picture are still skeptical because they're like, what are they doing over there? They've lost all their creativity. They've lost all zest. The color stories aren't fun anymore. The most recent palette that they've been pushing down our throat is so ho-hum, it's just like, what? The most innovative thing they came out with is the shake primer, that was different. But that didn't even like go over well, like not a lot of people were interested in that. Like, I don't know what they're doing. It's such a major flop from the brand name that is Kindness, Vegan Beauty and Discovery doing good to the different products that they're releasing now. It is such a flop. I don't think they're gonna last much longer in this beauty game at all. It's just a tragic, tragic rebrand all around. And even though I do love some of the products I have from KVD Vegan Beauty doing good, I just, mm, I'm over it. Like nothing about their brand intrigues me anymore. I am over it. So this was such a flop. And let me know what you think about KVD Vegan Beauty doing good. Are you interested in their products? Have you been excited about anything they've launched? Y'all let me know, all right? Moving on to the next brand that mm, I'm still hopeful for. I'm still hopeful that they can kind of rejuvenate some interest in their brand. Lorac Cosmetics. Okay, so Lorac, mm, they're well known for their pro palettes, right? We love those initial pro palettes, right? They had a full row of mattes, a full row of shimmers. They were coordinating neutrals. We were into neutrals. We were loving it, right? We love the wearable shades. And I think they did well up until like pro palette three. They even had some success with the mega pro palettes. I collected up to number four and then they just became stale as hell. People were looking for more textures and colorful color stories. They weren't looking for the same regurgitated neutral stories that Lorac was releasing. And it seemed that Lorac got more beige and beige as the years progressed. It's like, how did you go from like a bright blue in your pro palette two to this all beige palette for like your pro palette four? Was it four? Was it five? I don't know. I just know the last one that I saw was a nude palette with all beiges and I'm like, this is a hot damn mess. People just said, yeah, we're good here, bye, okay? And Lorac has not been able to kind of revive interest in their brand. And recently, they decided to do a rebrand and rebrand their pro palettes. So they've redone the packaging, they've redone the layout, and now they have removable magnetic pans. So you can shuffle around the shades as you see fit, which I actually think is a great idea. They have mini palettes, medium sized palettes, and then they have huge palettes with like 32 shades, I think, I'm not sure, maybe 24, I'm not sure. But they have like a decent range of palettes. They're neutral shades, they have beautiful shimmers, and they also like change the pricing structure. So these palettes are actually cheaper and I think, you know, they have potential because the palettes that they released, the new ones are actually fun. But I still think they're gonna be fighting an uphill battle because they're competing now with indie brands that have interest in shades and textures. They're fighting against mid-range and higher end brands that are releasing fun color stories with beautiful textures again. They have multi-combs now that they're going up against and all they chose to come out with again for their rebrand are neutral palettes. So there's a place, yes, I do love the neutral color stories that they created. I like the palettes. I actually bought all the new palettes and I really do like them. But is that sufficient to compete in this market? I don't think so. So I think this was a major flop, but I'm still hopeful that they might find their footing again <laughs> and maybe find their way into the hearts of the new beauty consumers because right now, <laughs> Whoo, they are struggling, child. They're on the struggle bus. All right, moving on. Let's talk about this brand. Hmm. This one was who interesting because there was such a buildup to this rebrand. Like it was a whole to do, okay? This is Makeup Geek. 
Okay, so Makeup Geek was started by Marlene Estelle, who is a beauty influencer here on YouTube. She started out with a blog and she evolved into a beauty brand owner. And you know, woo, it went well for a while because she had single eyeshadows. People love single eyeshadows because that's when MAC was big with their singles and people were looking for cheaper alternatives. So she really took the market by storm with those single eyeshadows. And they were fun for a while. And she kind of fizzled because she wasn't able to compete with like the palettes that were on the market because when she finally did release palettes they were so high priced that people were like what why am I spending this much on makeup geek eyeshadows that were supposed to be affordable in the first place and then her other products also went up in price like the highlighters the blushes all of those products were kind of overpriced and then she released a lip line that didn't do very well and she decided to take a step back she was going through some personal issues or whatever but she decided to revamp the brand so she pulled all the products she did a big sale to get rid of whatever remained in stock she had and she was like all right we're gonna rebrand we're gonna come back anew we're gonna be fresh and ready and there was a whole build-up okay it was months and months and months of anticipation and who what a flop that was so she came out with a freedom system I don't know what she called it I don't really care but it was pretty much single eyeshadows okay so the same thing she had before but now instead of round pans they're square pans and they're new shades with a new formulation but the formulation is not stellar so it was like all right you have a regular formula nothing spectacular about it you have all these matte shades you have some colorful shades and a few shimmers and they were in these freedom systems where you could build your own palette or you could buy the whole palette with all the shades for a ton of money like a ton of money so it was just like mm, mm, I, I don't know where you're going with this because nothing about this is exciting like the build-up was like oh my god this is gonna be like nothing you've ever seen before this is so innovative so different and then it wasn't and we're like other indie brands are doing the same thing for a lower price point and with a much better formula. I mean, come on, we have Sydney Grace and Tara Moons and JD Glow Cosmetics that is killing the single indie eyeshadow game. Are you crazy? And then I think her biggest competitor was ColourPop. When they came out and made affordable eyeshadows, she kind of took a hit because they were competing with her. They were creating better color stories. They were giving us palettes that were more affordable and Makeup Geek took that hit. I don't think people realize that that was really what did her in was ColourPop and Morphe. So anyway, I think this rebrand, the build up to it, the anticipation for the whole hum release, <laughs> like this build up was not warranted. Like what was released? versus what we thought was gonna be released. I don't know what we were thinking, but we certainly weren't thinking it was gonna be this much of a flop. So I don't know if Makeup Geek can recover. I think it's the end of them, even though they have a partnership with Target where they have their products inside certain Target stores. I don't think they're gonna be able to create the same momentum that they had for their brand when it initially launched. So I think this rebrand was a real letdown. Like it was a complete flop. And now let's move on to the fourth brand on our list, Bite Beauty. So Bite Beauty is a lip centric beauty brand. They are available in Sephora and they created beautiful bullet lipstick, lip glosses, liquid lipsticks. Like they were doing the damn thing with lipsticks. They were introducing really beautiful, interesting shades. You had like a bold green kale shade, a dark blue shade, and they had more of a natural food grade formula, which people loved. And they even have their Bite Beauty Lab in New York City where you can go in and create your own custom shade. Like you can mix your own shade and name it whatever you wanna name it and get that done for like 30 something dollars. So that's a fun thing that they were doing. So with Bite Beauty, it wasn't necessarily a rebrand, but it was a reformulation of all their products. So they wanted to go with a cleaner vegan formulation. So they wanted to go completely vegan. And with that being said, they had to redo some of their pigments and some of their formulas, you know, to jive with the vegan community. And, um, whoo, they came back and it was a bust. Okay. Because the formulations that they came back with 
weren't that stellar and I think they even came out with a complexion product that not many people cared about because they're known for their lip products and if you're gonna release a complexion product understand that you're gonna have to really market that and I don't think they did a really good job of marketing those products sending it out to influencers and getting people excited people weren't even excited about the rebrand I think it took them way too long to come back which was to their detriment and then on top of that they ended up getting rid of some of their signature products like the agave lip balm they changed the formula for that and it hasn't been the same since and so people have lost interest because if one of their favorite products is no longer as good as the original then people aren't gonna be intrigued and interested in trying out your newer products so I think this was a complete flop they took too long to come back they came back with so so products and I don't know. I don't know if they can come back again with the momentum that they had initially. Their lip products were really stellar. And I, you know what? I'm hopeful that they can still do something. Maybe, you know, maybe just a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. And now we're going to wrap up with the final brand, which is a drugstore brand. And that is CoverGirl Cosmetics. So I don't know if you guys have realized that CoverGirl did a almost complete revamp of their line. So they've gone cruelty free, which is amazing. They've gone completely cruelty free. So their formulations have changed, where they distribute their products have changed. And you know, it's a great thing when you see a drugstore brand going cruelty free, because the majority of drugstore brands aren't cruelty free because they sell in China. And that's the only reason they're not cruelty free. Not because they're actively going out and like testing on animals, but because they're marketing in China where the Chinese government requires animal testing for products that are sold in China to Chinese consumers. They're changing the system a little bit. We're hopeful, we're seeing changes, they're coming and they're gonna do away eventually with animal testing. So then all those brands are gonna end up being cruelty free by default, right? Because the only reason they were not cruelty free is because of the China situation. Anyway, CoverGirl went completely cruelty free, which is great to see. They also redid a lot of their packaging and got rid of a lot of their older products. And I don't know how well they're doing because some of their products seem to be hit or miss. They're not really doing well with like innovation and beautiful fun products and fun colors. They're not really exciting. So the social media influencer crowd, they're not flocking to their displays. People are not picking up CoverGirl, like who cares, right? And then I guess the everyday consumer still shops around for CoverGirl here or there, but then everything looks different. So they can't find their old favorites from the brand, their tried and true products. So I don't know that people are really picking up the newer products and trying them out but I don't know I'm still hopeful because again they went cruelty free I think they're trying to do the right thing they're trying to give us cruelty free options in the drugstore for an affordable rate and I mean some of their products are stellar I used to love some of their foundations they got rid of them oh my god their mascaras are really nice but I don't know that they've done well with eyeshadows and blush products and highlighters like they haven't really found their footing with that and I think other brands in the drugstore are kind of surpassing them. So I don't know that this rebranding really helped them out. I mean, they're pushing the cruelty-free thing. And um, I don't know how many regular consumers are really focused on cruelty-free. I mean, here on social media, in the beauty sphere, we speak about cruelty-free all the time. But if you're just an everyday consumer going in-store, are you really searching for cruelty-free? I don't know that you are. So I don't know that this rebrand really worked in CoverGirl's favor, but I'm, I'm hopeful. You know, maybe things can happen for them. We'll see. So let me know what you guys think about these five brands and their rebranding. Have you been picking up any of the new releases, the rebranded releases? What do you guys think? Have you found any stellar products that we should be talking about that should get more hype? Or are you just like, huh, what, who, where, who cares? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm going to leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along. And until my next video, which will be very soon, where we'll probably talk some more smack, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys.